It was based on uh, the crazy idea of running a relay marathon last year, so uh, a team of 10 of us from the senior management team in the UK split a marathon between us, running 2.62 miles each, and then some of us got bitten with the bug and decided to run the whole lot. I was talking to Claire and Ben at the time, who ended up running the marathon team, and as the conversation finished, Claire said to me, um, would you be interested in running the marathon? And I said yes, before I even knew what I committed to. I've run a couple of marathons before, but it was some while ago, and I've had um, three children in between, so I was pretty much starting from scratch. Um, so I followed a training schedule very much to the letter, um, building up my mileage up to about 30 to 35 miles a week with a, a particularly long run at the weekend. Um, so it was hard. It was uh, probably uh, the time rather than the actual running itself that was the hardest bit to fit in. No, I hadn't done anything like that before. Um, play a bit of sport and stuff so I wasn't unfit but I certainly wasn't when it all happened in the position to do a marathon. I'd go out and run three miles, come home and think how the hell am I going to get to five and then you'd run five and then the same question of eight and ten. Yeah the nerves kicked in I'd say about a week before the enormity of it. Every book magazine would tell you to ease off so I'd done my 18 so I knew physically I was ready for it. It was a fantastic uh, build up, but uh, a bit of a sleepless night the night before. Um, plenty of carbohydrates for the days leading up to lots of pasta and potatoes. And then on the morning of the run, I actually managed to eat seven bananas along with about three pints of Ribena. I could spot those that were running for the first time, just like I guess they could spot me, because there were people who just wanted to be on their own. So I, I didn't want to talk to anyone, I just wanted to get ready. Seeing the sea of runners as you start, um, literally as, as far as you can see in front of you and behind you, there's just sort of bobbing heads, and it just, the immense occasion really. So all the way around the whole of the 26 miles, you've got people clapping you on, offering you jelly babies. There's bands playing underneath the bridges with drums so that you get the echo. Um, really, everybody is just there to, to keep you going, to keep cheering you on. Everybody told me that you need your name written on you um, and I, I hadn't really, everyone said that not only will you need it on there but you will really remember why you took that advice. The first one I can remember, just a random lady, go on Mark and you don't know how and then you realise. At mile 12 you cross over London Bridge but it's the same point that you see those that are at mile 22 coming back the other way. So uh, you know that you've got another 10 miles to go just to be in the same position that they are. Now psychologically that's quite hard. I found that quite funny as you pass, as you say, the loop and you can see the, I suppose, the elite athletes coming back who are just bouncing along. And it wasn't so much that I'd seen them, it was the fact that they've been going for so much longer than we have and I'm passing them. So wherever they've been, I've got to now go. Hitting the wall at about 18 miles was hard. I could feel my energy just zap and I had to really dig deep to keep going. Um, but then seeing my family at, uh, at mile 23, so I saw my children, parents, husband at mile 23, stopped very briefly and realised I was nearly there and just dug in deep and uh, headed for the finish line. I'd made a kind of strange decision that I knew I could get to 18, fine, because I'd done that. So I, I kind of made an agreement with myself that I wouldn't question aches or pains or anything till I got to 18 miles. As I got towards the end, I hadn't factored in cramp, had never had cramp running before, um, and that really slowed me towards the end. There's people around to help, so a bit of a stretch and a straighten and uh, I hobbled in. It's just euphoria really, that you've crossed the line, you're in one piece, that you've got your medal, that you've got your foil blanket and that you've just done it. It's just a, an amazing sense of achievement, fantastic sense of achievement. Absolutely, take this out, put it in an achievement of enormity. You round that final bend and you have 200 steps to go in front of you and then it starts to hit you that you've just finished the marathon. Teammates can nominate a charity for various personal reasons and this year Children with Cancer was selected. In terms of raising the money we all collectively come together. And to date we've raised about £13,000 with um, the marathon and some other events and uh, obviously planning to raise more until the end of the year. And that includes sponsorship from friends, family, from teammates here at Insight but also a, a generous sponsor from um, Insight itself as well.